So this video is called Writing Believable Characters and today we're going to look at ways you can give your characters the depth and the subtleties and the nuances that make them really stand out as characters you want to follow and fall in love with and hate and all those things that you want your readers to, to feel about your characters. So I'm going to give you actual activities, exercises that you can do with your writing to make this happen for your characters. So stick around and let's see what we're going to do. So the first activity involves thinking of a new character, something entirely different from what you're writing now. I think it's a good idea sometimes to just free yourself up from all the expectations you have from the work in progress that you've got or the really big exciting book that you want to work on. For Sometimes for these exercises it's good to just do something different because then you allow yourself to be more playful and more experimental and that's good for your writing. So for activity number one I want you to think of your character, decide male, female, where are they, roughly what historical setting, a little bit about them, just tiny bits to get your character in your mind's eye so you can see it and then I want you to give that character a piece of luggage. Now, it can be anything. It can be a rucksack, it could be a briefcase, it could be a wee bag, it could be a really expensive designer handbag or purse. Um, you choose what piece of luggage you want to give that character. It could be something they use all the time. It could be a piece of luggage that's just specific to this part of their life and this particular story or this moment in their in their adventure. So choose your piece of luggage. You got that? You thought of something? Can you see it? Do you know what colour it is? What texture it is? How much it cost? How did they get it? Where did it come from? You know all those things about your piece of luggage. Just brainstorm it. Write down as many things as you can that are descriptive of that piece of luggage. And now what you're going to do is you're going to open that bag. So open it up and have a look at what's inside. And those things are going to be what your character chose to put in that luggage. And this is really important. These are not random things that he's ended up with. These are things that your character has chosen. So they're all going to be there for a reason, something to do with his story, but also they're going to reflect his personality. So um, if he's got a pen knife in there, what sort of pen knife or pocket knife is it? Is it a very expensive one? Is it one that has loads of different gadgets on it? Is it a pen knife that's for a specific thing? Is this a fishing bag? Is he going on a fishing trip? Is that fishing bag going to take him away somewhere from his family? Would he take a photograph of his wife in his bag? Would he take a photograph of his mistress? Um, you can really let your imagination run here. So think about what things would your character choose to take in that particular bag for that particular moment, whether it's a journey, whether it's a bag he always keeps with him, whether it's something he goes to work, whether we've said like the, the fishing bag or a sports bag, it's, it's something to do with his leisure time. So that exercise probably take, you can allow yourself five or ten minutes to really write down the type of the bag, the description of the bag, and just really brainstorm the things that he'd find in there. And when you've got those things, don't forget to write down why he's chosen them, where did he get them, why are they important to him? Okay, so that's activity number one, the piece of luggage and the things that go in it. Good, done that one, got that down, don't do it yet. You can go off and do it after you've looked at the video. First of all, just get the activities down, because I've got another really good one coming up for you, and you might want to do both of these together, so the first one, spend your time, and then go into the second one if you have time. You can do them separately, it's up to you. Okay, so activity number two is going to be Wander around your house, flat, apartment, office, wherever you are, school, doesn't matter, when you've got a moment, and choose an object. Now this is going to create a new character, so it doesn't have to be something that relates to anything you're doing now. Again, free yourself up, be playful, let your imagination run free. Um, and find an object. It can be something really mundane and simple, or it can be something more complicated. It really doesn't matter, Just it's going to depend on your mood the time you do the activity. So just allow something to talk to you and suggest itself. Once you've got that object, I want you to create a character inspired by that object. So 
You might think, well, that'd be much easier if I have a beautiful amethyst crystal. It's going to suggest a, a, a character who's interested in magic, or it's going to suggest a fantasy story, or something like that. Maybe. Sometimes those things are harder than you think. It could be a really mundane object, but that object is going to suggest a person to you, and you need to be able to say why that object is important to that person. Okay, so once you've got it, you think about the character, you begin to see a character that is related to that object. The next thing you're going to do is write a little scene based around that object and that character. So that scene is going to show us why that object is important to that character and at the same time it's also going to reveal more things about the character. So it's working in two ways. It's giving us inspiration for a character and it's giving us backstory for that character. It's informing us um, of, of the motivation behind that character's actions, something connected to that object. Now I'll just break that down a little bit for you in case it sounds complicated. So imagine you choose a comb, a hair comb. Just an ordinary, plain-looking comb. That's your object. So what character might that inspire? Now for me, that's going to inspire a hairdresser. And this hairdresser is running her own business. She's got a nice little business going, but times are hard. There's big competition opened up down the street, and they're taking away some of her customers, and she needs to do something to win back those customers. And this comb has started that off, so I've got my comb, my object, it's inspired me to think about a hairdresser. Now she's got a business, her problem is the business is failing, so what she wants, because we know that our characters have to want something, is she wants to win back her customers and win new customers. And the way she's going to do that is she's going to enter a contest, a huge and prestigious contest for hairdressers, and she's going to try and raise the profile of the business by winning that competition. And the scene you write to practice that character is the scene where she gets that idea. So she's using her comb, she's in her salon, you can set the scene as you want, create the salon, create the setting. You'll need minor characters perhaps for her to be talking to. And you write the scene where she has that idea, that moment of revelation as to what she's going to do to turn her situation around. And it's all based on that little object that she has in her hand. So you've got two really good activities there to help you work at those characters and really get their backstory, their motivation, the details behind them, get you to know your characters because the better you know your characters, the more you can get your readers to know your characters. And then the next thing you can do is you can take those activities and apply them to characters that you've already written. So you can go on and apply them to characters in your work in progress, characters in the book that you're about to write. Use the piece of luggage. What would they choose? What would they put in it? Make sure you know and make sure you get that across to your readers. Use the special object. Why is it important? What scene can you write that will show something really important to them related to that scene? So we've got other videos on characters. You might want to look at those. I'll be linking those on creating strong characters. But go away and try those activities. See how you get on. Let us know in the comments. Um, if you've got a particular problem with creating characters, you can put that in the comments too. Please like and subscribe for more tips on how to improve your writing, strengthen your work, and make those characters really believable. Good luck.